lot to laugh, right? <laughs> Go back to laugh before rather than drunk. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Um, Rog, one at embargo section today just for the dailies with every embargo until 10.30 again tonight. Now, I'll signal when that period begins. Billy, do you want to go first? Yeah, yeah, we'll start with team news. Uh, John Henderson obviously wasn't involved in midweek. Is he available to play this weekend? And James Milner, has he had to go through concussion protocols? And is he okay to play this weekend as well? So, Henno, yes, he's available. Um, uh, trained yesterday, completely normal, so should be fine. Um, was only a little thing, but serious enough to um, not involve him in the last game. Yes, and you answered the question already pretty much yourself. When you go through a concussion protocol, you are not available for the next game because you have to go to a different stages. He's completely he's fine, eh? um, but still, that's how it is, and it's how, how it is rightly so. Um, you have to go to different stages, and that means he is available for non-contact training on Monday and full contact training on Tuesday if everything goes well until then um, and that's what we expect because he was actually um, yesterday already good. Uh, we saw the impact that Darwin made when he came on the substitute. It's five goals in his last seven now and he seems to be someone who seems more certain of himself, more, more sure of, of his role in the side and that confidence and the progression seems to be Improving week by week. I mean, what difference are you seeing in in him at the minute in his all-round game? Yeah, big steps, big steps, and still space for improvement because the boy is an incredible package. But um, the, um, you could see immediately he's a, he's a real he's a real threat in 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 the, in the finishing area, involved in a lot of things. That's why you then realize how a few big chances he missed. Um, imagine he would have. Um, scored from them as well, so he's involved in pretty much everything. He's always um, an option to, to pass to, to cross the ball to, these kind of things. He came on, didn't play um, extremely long, but involved in both goals, um, which is good. Um, and yeah, so big steps, absolutely. The season so far has been contrast. So you look at your five Definitely. in the Champions League, you've beaten the form team in Europe in midweek, you've beaten City twice. The season as well. When you take all that into account, how big a moment do you feel this is in the season? Because you've got the opportunity to follow up a, a win in the week, the way you bounce back from those two defeats in the, in the Premier League. You've got the chance now to close the gap on Spurs to seven points, and it feels like it could be a big moment, a big opportunity to build a little bit of momentum going into towards that. Is yeah, big game for us, massive game for us, and it's difficult as well. Um, no, Spurs away. Um, yeah, you, everything you said is right. So the, I, I didn't count out the points distance between us and them, but it's a, uh, we cannot we cannot be picky with um, opponents and games and where we want to get points. We we have to we have to go for it definitely. But it's difficult. We all know that Tottenham is a, a, a side that's well organised, um, defending, um, um, extremely high level. So. Um, and counter-attacking is a massive thing. Now, the last two games, we had to chase the game and we saw um, the, the offensive um, power as well. So, um, I think Spurs um, put in a good moment. So, they had uh, um, turned now two important games uh, around the last minute and especially the last one was, was a really big one uh, for Tottenham. And um, so, we are, we are prepared for a confident, um, strong opponent. Relatively well against them over the last, I think you've been in nine. So that one before the nine, that was the game at Wembley that seemed, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like it's a million miles away, maybe from now in terms of good Champions League games either side and then maybe it's a blip and then it seems to be around that time. Can you see any similarities from that sort of period to now in terms of doing really well and then a blip and then just to put things into perspective? You mean when we lost 4-0 or what? 4-1 at Wembley. Oh, 4-1. Oh, most scored. Most scored. <laughs> the first half One of the 400 the goals he scored against Tottenham in a 4-1. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I took Dejan off. You, you had that really research, huh? But I remember that as well, by the way. It because just... I had Dejan the next day in the office. <laughs> 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 
aber uh, ask him to come in until he um, knocked on my door. Um, uh, phew. I thank God I cannot feel anymore what happened four years or whenever it was ago. Um, but the situation, what we have is so like we see um, what we are capable of doing in, 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 in specific ways, really big games, good games, stuff like this. But then uh, it's a lot of games and we have to always do to freak a little bit who can play again, who is not aware. But it's not, it was never now like, yeah, same lineup again, come on. Let's go from here. So it, I don't think we had that chance a lot of times. Um, these kind of things. So we, that's why it's it's probably. But I, I can't remember that what what was around that did this game. To be honest, um, and but it's like this. If you are not if you are not consistent, then there's always a reason for it. And and very often it's a it's a it's a reason with availability. Who can you who can you play? How often can they play? Blah blah blah. All these kind of things. And that's one of one, not the only, but one of the reasons why we don't are not consistent. If it was that that time as well, um, then um, there are similarities. If not, then not. So we are. I, I the problem is with if you to to explain wins. It's really easy because nobody listens really because everybody's in a great mood and it's like you're just smiling and oh, it's good shape. Um, explaining when you lose is much more difficult because each word is really important. But it's that you cannot, or at least I don't have five million different words for it. If you want to get out of something, you first have to get through it, and that's where we are. So and it might take time, but it doesn't mean we we don't say now. Tottenham is too early for us to to really show up already. No, it's not. We are that we go there and want to be at our best 100%. But sitting here now and being 1000% convinced, yes, and we will. The, what I can tell you, it never was before going to Tottenham that I thought, good moment to face Tottenham, let's smash them. Was never the case. Uh, it's a difficult place to go. A really good team, extremely well coached. Um, and a real fighting unit. So there are no friendly games against them. Antonio's on his toes, uh, on the sideline. The players are in challenges and blah blah blah, all these kind of things. So it will be a tough one. But that's how that's what we actually all want. It's like a Champions League game in the Premier League. Uh, so um, and that's how we will um, approach it. You know, in terms of when you said nobody listens. When you win, do you mean us? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you can now say you generally doesn't. Don't. And does that mean listen. you have to be more careful in terms of what you say with every word? Or I can I cannot. I, I, I no, not careful. I'm not sure if I should be more careful. No, it's not about that. It's just like I can imagine that people in a in a, in a face like this it takes a bit longer. So. Um, they are always the same, fighting and doing this and all again and these kind of things. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Without fighting, we shouldn't even try. Um, yes, we have to fight through this. That's the case. That's how it is. You cannot play through it. You cannot say, now, by the way, forget the defending stuff. Let's just circle around them and, and these kind of things. Pass the ball through them. Nutmegs here, back heels there. That's not how it works. So, And that's why we are um, in the mood we are. And it's, it's absolutely OK. Um, and of course, that it, it's rather good that in between you lose against Leeds, and I couldn't have felt worse. No chance. Um, but then you play a good game against a team in form, and that gives you a lift. That's normal. Completely. Bam. Here we go. And now we play Tottenham, and now we try to make sure that we feel like after the Napoli game. Thank you, Julia. Is it as easy, Jürgen, saying that you raise your game, the team raises its game against Leeds, and you But it didn't only do that. We won. Uh, Bournemouth is doing th thank God really well after that. But we played nine, we won nine nil against Bournemouth and, and, and against Rangers. It's not only then. But our our problem, why we change systems and why we did all these kind of things, is one is the availability of players. The other thing is like we 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 were, we were not as solid defensively as we, as we used to be. So, and. You can always point the finger in the thing in, the, in the, the things you don't do well and say, okay, this was not good, this was not good. We have to improve this. We have to improve that. Or you give them a completely new textbook. So and that's what we tried with changing the system. So now it's not about how did we last game. So it's it's like a new chapter. Okay, in this system we do it like this, 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 this. You don't compare it with the last one. So like a positive um, start 
um, and to make sure to help the boys because that's actually my main job to help the boys to to do what they do in the, in the most confident way and manner and um, that's why we did that and because our problem in these moments were was was defending actually as a as a team as a unit and that's why I said now the last game we defended Napoli extremely well a football playing side. Uh, but we closed exactly right gaps, everybody was involved, chasing from the back, um, our counter press was really good, we had a high last line, that means we were high up in, in midfield, so we really could be around these situations, the football things. Um, and that's why um, it's not the system gave us opportunity to defend better, no, we defended in a system better, in which we didn't defend that well five, six weeks ago. Um, since we played it last time, and and that's it. We have to defend on incredibly high level, and then sometimes, um, and now the, the big challenge, obviously, even if we defend really well, we have to attack as well. And now against Tottenham, um, counter attacks are a real threat, a real strength of them, and um, so you need to be well protected. All these kind of things. So it's not you can, that you can close in football one door or one or solve one problem relatively. Or yeah, rather likely, like it's pretty likely that you um, open another problem in that moment, another gap in football, and um, these kind of things. And that's why we are um, trying and trying and trying. And um, with all the things we know about football, in the end, you have to play the game. And um, the next game is Tottenham, and I'm looking forward to it. You're welcome. Hi. Hi. Again. Hi. A different competition, I know, but, but but how much of a step forward was that? Defensively to get a clean sheet against Napoli, I, I know in some terms it, it was a dead rubber, but, but in terms of this like, game didn't look for a second like a dead rubber, no, I, I would mean, say. It's solving the defensive difficulties that, that you, you've had from, from the start of the season. No, it's margins. It's margins. We conceded. We didn't concede a, a goal in that game for what was it? An armpit. I, I um, yeah. yeah. So look, that's how it is. Um, <laughs> There's not, it's, it's not, it's the difference between not conceding, not conceding, sometimes armpit. So that's how it is. I don't, I don't know. It, it's not that I think we defended in the best possible way, but it was a set piece. All the rest, when you considering how how good Napoli is um, in this moment in time, how how easy it looks in moments when they play. This is a, the the the. the the analyze of Napoli was a pure joy from a football point of view, because everything they do works out in the moment. It's crazy the way they the way they score goals, where they score the goals, uh, in the minute in highest tempo, all these kind of things. So, and the challenge was to to deny that, and we did that. We did that in a in a really in a really good way. So that's good, obviously. But it's not no news to me that we can do that. So we just have to do it again. So that's how it is. And again, and again, and again. That's how it is. But it's a different game. Napoli is an offensively orientated team. At Tottenham, it's not 100% clear how they will get into this game. Uh, okay, it's a home game. And last two games, well, I mean, they had to chase it. It was an obvious change of approach. Before that, it was rather well organized and a bit deeper defending and going for counter attack. So we have to expect pretty much both. Um, but one will be sure when we have the ball, they will be really compact and will be really um, difficult to play against. That's clear with a 5-3-2 maybe. Um, and that's, that's, that, that's the challenge now. It's, no, you cannot compare it. And yes, it's important that we did it. Of course it's important. And again, the, the game didn't look like a second, uh, for a second like a dead rubber. Both teams really went for it. It was really intense. And um, that's what I liked about it, because it could have been a boring nil-nil. And even as long as it was nil-nil, it was not boring. How much of a step forward was midweek for Fabinho? Because yeah. somebody <laughs> who, by his very own high standards, yeah. uh, has struggled this season. And it's, it's something that's difficult. It's good. Play. It's absolutely good. The game was a clear sign of, um, of Fabinho, how we know him. It um, um, was a good game, but we, we had we defended in all positions uh, on a different level to the, to the week before. Um, and so. Yes, what was good. Um, felt good. You could, for him, very important uh, to realize that that's possible as well, and uh, it was a good start in the right direction. Carl, can I just go back to the um, circumstances of Roma's injury? 
Um, concussion is, is obviously a, a major thing in all sport now, and you've had experience of it with the carriers in the Champions League final. Just wondering how you think those sort of, how it can be dealt with differently when it happens on the pitch? Because there's been a couple of instances recently where there's been criticism of how clubs have made a hand. I'm not saying in this is what. No, 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 I know. I, oh, it's difficult. Uh, it's it's oh, well, not that easy because you need two sources. One is the doctor, one is the, the patient. That's how it always is. I'm not sure anybody of you had already a concussion. I had it once or twice in my life, and um, so and I feel different, and um, or they felt different, and um, for me it was clear. He got he got a real check on the pitch. It was fine. Uh, in the first place, when it happened, um, in the dressing room, without meeting, Millie was completely fine. I spoke yesterday to him, which I thought it's one hundred percent okay, um, and came out. Now, after calming down, came out and the flat light. <laughs> like, whoop, what's going on here? So, and then he realized, and that's then obviously the most important source that the player realized nah, that's not that's not good. So we have to stop. That was more when we stopped when he was sat down and we took him off, obviously. So. Um, I don't think it can be really dealt differently with it because usually a doctor gets on the pitch and if, if the doctor and doctors are like this, if they feel, um, oh hey, he's not all right, then it's immediately gone. There's no chance for the player to say, no, 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 I'm fine, I'm fine, but we count my fingers or whatever, whatever tests they are doing. So um, that everybody takes it really seriously, really seriously. Nobody wants to push a player through with a with a concussion and think, yeah, that's an old. What was that with, with Mr. Clough? Was it was it him or another coach when I've been played? How is he? How he, he got he got a knock. He doesn't know who he is. Tell him he's Pelé and send him back. <laughs> it's a good joke, but we don't do that nowadays anymore. Yeah. Um, was he Clough? Many people. Have said Ma yeah. Oh, okay, it's a good one. Um, yeah. That's it. We we really take it seriously. That that's definitely the case. And it was the first moment that we. That everybody knew, and especially Millie knew. Okay, that's it, and here we stop. I guess that highlights the difficulties of diagnosing concussion because you don't know when it's going to going to kick in. Obviously, you know, there's quite a gap between you getting the blow and then feeling the effects. And there's been talk of you know sort of temporary fixes like you, you obviously have access to a concussion substitute, but there's been people sort of suggesting you have a temporary substitute while someone is assessed and all sorts of ways of getting around it. But yeah, but it's it's uh, it's in a high performance sports on the pitch, um, surrounded by 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, maybe one hundred thousand people. Um, I think it's difficult enough to do it in a in a in a close environment in a in a in a, in a medical practice. So to figure it out immediately, so you need a few tests probably. So there are I said two sources: doctor and and player, and everybody takes it seriously. When I mean, the player is dizzy, then he's off. Um, first in first moment, immediately done. And um, when a doctor has the feeling that um, he's not right, then he's off. It's the quickest we can do. What do we? What shall we do? El? What, what else shall we do? I know when you say now temporary subs, I'm fine with the, with the concussion sub. Absolutely fine. Take him off um, and bring another player. Means you can still change five times um, after that. The other team has an extra sub. I I, I think that's the best we can do. About. Uh, when you say now it takes quite a while between getting the concussion and that is really um, uh, kicking in, um, I'm not sure 15 minutes is then the, the time to, to wait for. So then people tell you yeah, after an hour it kicks in. That's I think how we do it is the right way, and it doesn't happen that often. To be 100% honest, I can't I can't remember one before. It's now the first time it was the, the way Milly got hit. But when did we have a concussion before? I can't, I can't remember it. So we can talk about it like it happens all the time and the boys are constantly in danger. They are not. They are well-trained athletes and it, it, it doesn't happen that often. But if it happens, we have a solution for it, which is much better than ever before in football's history. It's a space for improvement, probably, but I don't know how. Last one for Neil Jones, then on the embargo section. Obviously, it's, it's two weeks since the start of the World Cup, and there's a growing number of players now either out of the World Cup or. I don't like, I, I hate this subject. Okay, well, can I still ask a question from a manager's point of view? Is there anything you can do to balance that? No. The, the threat of players or no. the demands of, of the team? 
No. That's it. I, I, well, <laughs> these problems were so clear. They were so clear. And nobody mentioned it for one time until three, four weeks before the World Cup. When all of a sudden player got, got injured and they say, oh, they cannot play the World Cup. Ooh. So this specific problem that players who got late injured in a season and can't play the World Cup is, is not new. So after a long season, it happens everywhere in the world. But now, starting the World Cup a week after the last game, oh, that's a big risk. Crazy. Nobody cares about us, how we deal with it. And you, you ask me all the question, and if I give you all the answers and these kind of things, what, what do you think what I shall do? Ask the players before Southampton or now before Derby. Really? Want to play? So, yeah, but what's the situation? Asking a question is one. But all the, you, we are all guilty, and you more than I am guilty, for letting it happen. Letting it happen in the first place. Oh, and now it's happened. Now we have the, uh, the situation, and that's it, and we have to go uh, along with it. And for uh, the players who get injured and cannot play is a, is a disaster. But how can we change that? Thank <laughs> you.